All right. So I have plenty more where this came from, but I just want to at least take a moment during what should have been a fun little uh, victory Monday and which has been very stressful for Rams fans today. The Darion Kendrick arrest, obviously we'll keep you updated on here as we hear more. Um, but also, you know, the Kyron Williams and Ronnie Rivers injuries. Kyron Williams is expected to miss this week and Ronnie Rivers could find himself on the IR. So I will get into that in a later video uh, where we discuss more about the running back room. I got a lot of stuff planned for you guys. I'm really excited about um, but I just wanted to give Kyron Williams his due. I was going to make a video on him. Then the news came out that he's probably going to miss uh, week seven against the Steelers. And it's really a bummer there. But I decided, you know what, let's keep this positive and, and let's go in the right direction here. And that's what I'm going to do um, with Kyron Williams in this video. We're going to talk about what he's been doing, why he's been so successful and why this really matters. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe and comment. Follow me at JK Bogan on all social media and let's dive into it. So Kyron Williams is ninth this year among all running backs in snaps. He's tied for fifth in carries, fourth in rushing yards, tied for third in rushing touchdowns, fourth in yards after contact, ninth in missed tackles forced. He's fourth in DR, second in YAR, fourth in DVOA, third in VOA, second in success rate, third in efficiency rating, and first in yards over expected in week six. Here's the thing with Kyron Williams. He's a fifth round pick. He was a rookie last season, didn't get a chance to be the guy that they were hoping he could be because he suffers an injury the first game of the year against the Buffalo Bills. He's on the kick uh, team, and he gets rolled up on after the play. So that's the unfortunate thing. He was supposed to have a bigger role last year, and it didn't come to pass. So uh, this year, he's had a bigger role. Cam Akers wanted out. Um, he wanted to be the guy. They didn't understand uh, apparently what was going to happen because they saw a tandem between the two. Cam wanted to be the guy. And so that tandem went up in flames. And since you talk about running backs with, you know, big time usage rate, um, Kyron's among the league leaders in that he's been used pretty much 97 to 98% of the time. The other times it's been either Cam Akers week one, or if you're going back to week two, it's only been really Ronnie Rivers until Zach Evans came in to spell Ronnie uh, yesterday. Now, here's the thing. I understand he's probably going to miss week seven. He could miss week eight. I don't have the full information. I just know that he has an ankle sprain and, you know, that sucks. But I also think this is really precautionary. If this was the Super Bowl, I think he'd probably play this weekend. It is not. So they're wanting to be cautious with this because it says a lot. He just had 158 yards. He had almost eight yards per carry last week or, you know, this past uh, Sunday. I just want to give credit where credit's due. Kyron Williams has been the guy. He has taken up the mantle. You can't get on him for when he wasn't utilized in the run game. We've been sitting here saying run the ball and Sean McVay simply hasn't done that in a few of those games where it costs them wins. You could talk about if they run a little bit more against the Eagles, they might've won that game. If they want ran a little bit more against the 49ers, they might've won that game and the, the Bengals, no doubt they would have won that game. So right now the Rams are three and three and there are going to be without Kyron Williams this week against the Steelers at the very least, but let's just focus on what they might have here in the second year running back out of Notre Dame. This is somebody that has already showed you he is stout in pass protection, okay? He's somebody that doesn't really hesitate, doesn't dance in the backfield, is really just quick to hit the hole. But what we've seen is that this is somebody since week two, when he became the de facto starting running back, he's gotten better each week. He's learned from his mistakes. He's basically a rookie at this point in time. To go into a starting role, you have to treat it like it's like your rookie year. They've really counted on him, and he's really delivered. Okay, when we talk about the touchdowns, that's not something that's, oh, well, Stafford got him down the field, and then he capped it off. If it was that simple, other running backs would be doing it. To find a running back who can find and hit the end zone the way he does, to have a true nose for the end zone is incredible and it is so vital because that's what the Rams had with Todd Gurley. 
It really allows you to just put points up on the board anytime you get near the red zone. And that's something at the end of the day that needs to be said when you look at Kyron Williams. He's been a model of consistency when you get in the red zone. Now, his drops in the passing game have been annoying and they've been disappointing because, you know, it was told that he didn't drop anything in practices and training camp and so forth. But again, he's young. He's new. He's not used to starting on the at the NFL level. We're seeing it week in and week out. He's getting better and better and better. And we finally saw it all really come together against this Cardinals defense. Now, understandably, I understand it was the Cardinals. I get it. But we have to be real here, okay? Any given Sunday, teams play better than you would expect. Teams play worse than you would expect. I'm sure everyone, their mother, thought that the Chiefs offense would destroy the Broncos. That wasn't necessarily what happened, okay? That's not what happened. I don't think many people thought the Browns would beat the 49ers or the Eagles would lose to the Jets without Aaron Rodgers, without most of their offensive line and no, like none of their secondary. That is the way the NFL works. So you can't just say, well, it was the Cardinals. Okay, well, why didn't Tony Pollard do that? You know, but they, they lost. Dallas Cowboys lost that game. So you can't take any of that for granted. And furthermore, you can't take a running back for granted in this league. You can't on one hand say, man, I wish the Rams, uh, you know, run blocking was better. Or I wish the Rams offensive line was better. And then the other hand, when Kyron Williams has a good game, say, oh, man, the offensive line, they just basically carried Kyron Williams. It's not the case because it's not what happened. Kyron Williams generated missed tackles and he's on the level of Derrick Henry in doing that this year. See, you could say all in all, like, okay, and I hear this all the time. This is the biggest knock. This is the only knock that you can make about Kyron Williams right now with the Los Angeles Rams, and it's one thing. It's the fact that they run 11 personnel the majority of the time, and it forces teams to play with a lighter front because when you run 11 personnel, you're going to get guys spread out. You're going to have three wide receivers. You're going to have Cooper Cup. You're going to have to accommodate for Puka Nakua. You're going to have to be mindful of Tutu Atwell. So because of that, you can't stack the box. You can't throw eight, nine guys up in front and stop the run. It makes it easier to run the ball, no doubt. However, it doesn't matter because there are still teams, there are still running backs that can't do it despite the fact. And if you want to tell me is 158-yard performance yesterday and a touchdown on 20 carries could have been replicated by anybody in that offense, you're sadly mistaken. If you took 10 running backs at random in the NFL, maybe two of them do what Kyron Williams did yesterday. And maybe only one of them, truly. Kyron Williams led the entire slate in rushing yards. That was more than Raheem Mostert. That was more than the emergence of, uh, you know, the return of Saquon Barkley. He ran for more yards than all those guys, all of them. Kyron led everyone in rushing yards. So why is he being treated like this? Because he's a fifth round pick. If Kyron Williams is a first round pick or second round pick and was six foot tall, people would be just crazy about him. But still, we're getting the meh talent from guys over that, you know, only look at a spreadsheet after the game is done and don't actually watch the tape. Don't even watch the games. I'm convinced some of those fantasy football reporters, analysts, whatever. Um, there's some great ones out there, but there are some that are ridiculous. I've already called that out on Twitter, so you already know who I'm talking about. <clears throat> but I, I, I want to make this video because I want to make it very clear that it's not just because he's on the Rams. It's not just a feel-good story. Kyron Williams is a top 10 running back right now in the NFL. And when he gets that receiving area of his game under wraps and he gets going in that and he has some, uh, some consistency built and some confidence, we're going to see him like an Austin Eckler in this league where not only is he going to go in the first round of your fantasy football draft, but he's also going to be in play every single year for offensive player of the year. And I understand that sounds crazy to believe, but right now he's averaging 4.7 yards per carry. He's getting better and better and better each game. And by the way, he's only had three games that he's played in since Kevin Dotson, who, by the way, I think is the best offensive lineman on their team. And I'll get to him in another video, but 
since Kevin Knotson took over in week four, he's only gotten better. 158 yards rushing. His second best game of his career was the uh, the game against the Colts week four. That was Dotson's first game. Look, I'm just saying, guys, it's okay to give Kyra Williams some credit. It's okay. You're not going to sound biased. He's one of the best running backs this year in football. It's why I list off all those metrics. If you don't know what DR or YAR or DVOA or VOA is, it really just shows you that even now the metrics, the, the, the regular stats and the analytics, they're all starting to come together. Kyron Williams leads in just about everything uh, in that top five, top 10 range. It's okay to admit it. He is a top 10 running back. Does he have it easier than some other running backs because he runs in that, you know, like less than eight man in the box front? Okay. Yeah, that's fair. But this guy is having to be on the field and doesn't get to just take a, a, a break when they need it because he is so valuable in pass protection. And a lot of these running backs, they, you know, they run well first and second down. They come out every third down because they can't do what it takes to be a three down back. Can I say those guys have it easier? Kyron's only running 20 times and what they're having 70 snaps a game. He's still utilized in those other snaps as a, and he's getting heavy contact every single play because he's, he's having to go in pass protection. So I'll just say that, man, at the end of the day, this is a top 10 running back in football. It is unfortunate as all hell that he will not be ready to go this weekend against the Steelers. The hope is he will be back for week eight against the Dallas Cowboys. Um, but he is a hell of a talent. The Rams knew what they were doing when they traded up to get him in the fifth round last year. And of course, my co-host at downtown Rams, Alexis Kraft, who showed me him very early on in his Notre Dame tenure, uh, knew what she was talking about when she said, this guy's the real deal. He's not your six foot two, 220 running back who can leap over guys left and right. Who's got the four, three track star speed. Who's going to break every tackle, but he's pretty darn good being five, nine and a buck 95. I'm Jake Ellenbogen. If you like this or like anything like this, be sure to subscribe. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button, drop a comment, follow me on all socials at JK Bogan. And just be mindful of the fact that if you haven't already, you can hit that bell icon. If you hit the bell icon and you're always wondering why I miss Jake Ellenbogen videos, why I don't get alerted. There you go. You hit the bell icon. You'll never miss another video. It'll be alerted. We also have a Discord channel, which all of these videos, when they come out, are immediately pinged in the Discord channel. So you can use that as well. But anyway, I'm Jake Ellenbogen. I'll see you guys soon. Later, folks. 